You're in the mix. SKM presents Strictly for the Music Podcast. You are now live with the number one podcast for all upcoming artists worldwide. It's the real. The real deal. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode. This is Strictly for the Music Podcast. I'm your host, SKM. The next just I got live in the red debuted in 2018 something to say ladies and gentlemen the band he debuted in was the town pants with no further ado my next guest jeff triple e what's up guys hey man appreciate you coming on the podcast thank you for having um, me man um i know this has been a, been a minute since we've been trying to get you on but let's get right into it man describe sure. your music from the beginning man uh, well, we do Celtic folk rock. Um, in basic terms, we call it rowdy Irish drinking music. <laughs> okay, uh, man. Yeah. We're based out of Vancouver, British Columbia, um, called the Town Pants. Uh, so they're on the west coast of Canada. I'm on the east coast of America. So we're by inter- We're from two countries. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> All right, man. So uh, what influenced you to get into music, man? Well, I was 10 years old when uh, my friend and I were just hanging out, riding bikes, got really bored and we were watching MTV and we saw Nirvana on MTV Live and Loud back in like 1993. And I just never looked back. I started playing drums. I didn't even realize I could do it. Next thing I know, I've been playing drums for about 28 years now. I'm just turned 38 years old. So what got me into it, I really don't know. It just kind of came to me. It it was just a calling, I guess, that I wasn't even aware of. And, uh, yeah, it's 28 years later. I'm still doing it professionally now. All right, man. So um, describe how uh, this band formed, man. Well, this band is run by two brothers, um, David and Dwayne Keough. And uh, the way that I met them was through a mutual festival. I was playing with a different band at the time, and they were playing with this, at the same festival, and we crossed paths there. Um, but the band started long before I was in it. Um, it started from the, the two brothers just getting together, and next thing you know, they're kind of the same thing where it just happened to be they just worked out really well musically and it just clicked and they kept going with it. And um, honestly, I don't know too much history about the Town Pants except for when I was involved, which started in 2016. So um, you can, I guess they got the name. The Town Pants was the name of a, a racehorse at a betting track. And their uncle gave them five bucks each and they won on the horse. So they decided to name the band uh, after the horse, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, man. So, uh, uh, let me get this right. So, the beginning of the Town Pants, the debut album was Holy Ground in 1997, but you weren't there at the time, right? No. Um, I didn't meet them until about probably 2004, 2005. Okay. Yeah. All right, man. So, um, so what album were you featured on? Uh, the, the, last the last one. The last one? Yeah. Something to one. say. That's right. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. So, uh, man, um, what is it like, man, coming into a band that's already established and being new to it? Like, what was that feeling like, man? The feeling was great. Um, I've known the band probably about, you know, eight or seven years before I got into the band. I was really good friends with them. I've seen them live a bunch of times. They've seen me play. So it was kind of like you know, really not nerve wracking because I'd seen them play before and I knew them and I knew the music. So it was relatively easy given the fact that I knew the songs, but I still had to like play the songs and develop my technique to be able to play them. So it was really fun to see how I could adjust to that new style of music. All right, man. Um, so uh, 2016, you come into uh, the Town Pants, you drop an album two years later, man. Was that, uh, what, uh how, how was the format going in the creative process of creating this album, man? Really, it was pretty organic. Um, we spent about two weeks in Vancouver. They flew me out there. Um, we really had no idea what the songs were. I had never heard any of the songs they planned on performing. Um, of course, they had been writing these songs for quite some time, and they were ready for to present to the whole band to, for us to record. So I went in. We had a week where we just rehearsed and we recorded a demo at our producer, Mark Henning's um, home studio. Um, We took that demo home with us. We listened to the songs over and over again so we could refine them. And then we took it the next week into the studio at Crew Studios in North Vancouver. 
and we laid down all the tracks in about a week. Um, at that point, once I was finished, I got to fly home and rest up and do my thing. And these guys took it into post-production and released the album. I think, uh, it was, uh, just before we went out on tour in 2018. So it was around late springtime, 2018. So all in all, the process for me was about two weeks. All right, man. So I got to ask you this big question, man. Yeah. Uh, what makes you different from other drummers, man? That's a good question. Um, and that's a really tough one to answer. But it's a really simple um, statement that everybody's got their own DNA. Everybody has their own personality. Um, a lot of musicians that I know when they're young, coming up, when they're just starting to play, they play like they're heroes. They want to be John Bonham. They want to be Neil Peart. They want to be Keith Moon. After a while, that gets really boring, especially when you're in an original band. You want to have your own identity. So for me, it's just finding myself as an artist is what makes me different. And using the music of the Town Pants, their music is a different approach for drumming, given the fact that I'm using sort of uh, a hand drum is hooked up to the drum set. And I'm using that in the groove on the drum set. So there's kind of a hybrid of this organic hand drumming atmosphere mixed in with like, you know, my backgrounds, which is hard rock and Americana type stuff. So it's a really interesting blend. To see, and to see how I've come into it is um, a new thing to me. To, to, it's like a self-discovery kind of thing. So I guess what makes me different is just I'm me, you know? All right. I am who I am, you know? All right, man. All right. So, uh, so man, uh, let me ask you this. Did you have yeah. any other gigs before to, uh, 2016, before you joined the Town Pants? Yeah, I've been playing in bands my whole life um, since I was about – well, let's see. I graduated high school when I was 18, got into college. I attempted to go to college when I was 20. At that time, I was playing on the road um, with my friend who's a singer-songwriter on acoustic guitar, and he's the one that got me really first playing. Um, and I did that for quite some time, playing on the road, getting to know how the things work. And then at that time, things fell apart, and I got into another band from Ithaca, New York, and they played Zydeco music. I'm not sure... If you're familiar with that, it's like New Orleans kind of music. Um, and so from that, we got into bigger festivals. That was more of like a hippie kind of thing. So I got really involved with a lot of the jam band scene and knowing a lot of my local festivals and stuff like that. And from there, I just never stopped. Um, so I guess, you know, it's a really long story. I've been playing drums my whole life. It's all I've been doing, you know, other than raising my two daughters and um, hanging out with my girlfriend. There's not much else I do other than teach a couple drum lessons here and there so it's it's my whole life it's all i do all right man all right so uh man um what was it about the art of drumming that got you inspired to uh get down on the drums man oh the feel and the ability to make people dance and move you know and to spread happiness to make people feel as good as i feel when i play that's that's what keeps me going you know all right man yeah all right so let me ask you this man um would you say that drums is something that needs to be uh, more taken serious in music? Um, that's a good question. There's a fine line between feel and technique. Um, there's two different kinds of drummers to generalize, and I don't like generalizing, but there's two different kinds of drummers. When I was growing up, there were the kids in marching band that had all the technique and could read music really, really well. And I really love that stuff, but to me... Um, I have more of a feel approach. So I think that it's a blend and it's a delicate balance between having technique and feel. And, you know, that's that's pretty much where it's at, you know. All right, man. Yeah. All right. So um, let me ask you this, man. Um, ch can, can the audience find any more material that you have besides uh, 2018, something to say? Yeah, um, I have a few releases that I've done since COVID, I've been delving a lot into recording at home, as well as in my buddy's studio. He has a studio, um, Mole Tracks in Syracuse, New York, with Jeff Molesky. He's worked with like Smashing Pumpkins and a whole bunch of acts like uh, Suicidal Tendencies and stuff like that. So uh, you can find some of that stuff on my SoundCloud. I'm also up on, I think Bandcamp has got a few things going on. But yeah, if you just Google Jeff Tripoli drums, Syracuse, New York, you can find a whole bunch of stuff. Um, especially if you go to my SoundCloud, I'm going to be updating that pretty soon. All right, man. All right. 
So, um, so what about any music videos, man? Do you have any music videos for your last <laughs> album you dropped? Something to say? Yeah, there's a couple things. Uh, you can look us up. The Town Pants are all over the internet um, on YouTube. You look us up there, you can find a couple things. Um, I've also got a, a couple snippets of a video that I put together for my new solo record that's still a work in progress, but I plan on having a music video released for every song. Hopefully, uh, it's a lot of production, but I'm going to be getting that stuff together. All right, man. All right, so leading on to the next question, man. Any live performances, and what was it like performing for the first time? Man, um, no live performances currently on the books that are confirmed due to the current pandemic. However, performing live for the first time <laughs> was actually caught on videotape from my father. Uh, so it looks like I had a really good time. But uh, it's just, it's a thrill to be able to be on stage with other humans that are your friends, that are fellow musicians that you're sharing an experience with. It's, uh, you can't describe it in words. It's a really sort of spiritual connection that, you know, humans have when they get into live music, especially when you're performing it. And the connection with the audience is what it's all about. I mean, every musician is deep down, you know, every entertainer deep down likes the attention. So I guess that's really what it is for me. Um, plus, I'm a pretty, uh, my, my stature is a pretty, I'm a small guy. So, you know, being able to play the big drums, it gives me a little bit of uh, power. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's all right, all right, man. All right, man. All right, so man, um, uh, what was one of your favorite memories? Um, uh, what was one of your favorite memories performing live? Well, uh, there's a lot of them, and it's tough to remember all of them. But I think one of my favorite memories was um, 2019. We played in my hometown at the Syracuse Irish Festival, and both my daughters got a chance to see me for the first time on stage live and my father was there and uh, it was really, really fun to see the whole family just come together and, and really have a great time. And believe me, they've seen me play before, but they've seen me play shows where there's like five people there or, you know, it's a really bad atmosphere. Um, and then to have them come out to a show that was like really properly put together and really a fun show for everyone was really, that was, that was my best memory ever playing live. All right. Yeah. That's yeah, dope, sure. man. All right. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, man. All right. So, man, let me ask you this, man. Since yeah. you said the pandemic's been holding you back, um, have you performed live on Instagram Live, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, any live streaming platform? Well, we did an interesting thing with the Town Pants over this past New Year's Eve. Um, what we did is we pre-recorded um, myself on audio and video at Moltrek Studio. Um, my girlfriend, Justine, helped out with the video cameras, and then I had uh, – Molesky was um, on the board. He's a great studio engineer. So what we did is I played along to pre-recorded Town Pants songs with um, a metronome click track, and we recorded the audio and video. I then forwarded that information to the band. They had their sound guy, uh, Mark Henning, our producer, put that up on his system, and I was basically on the TV – in their living room as they filmed themselves playing along with my film tracks. So it was an interesting way to like, not necessarily perform live, but somehow put it together that I had a pre-recorded tracks that I could send to them and they could perform along with them. So it was the best of any hybrid that we could put together to possibly get together to play live. <laughs> All right, man. All right. Yeah. So, um, so what's one of the songs that inspired you, man? Oh my God. Um, Probably uh, anything from Led Zeppelin, anything from The Who. Um, I'm also a, a huge fan of Phil Collins on drums, especially um, because it's weird. I have the same birthday as Phil Collins. I'm also a drummer that can do backup singing. Um, I'm not left-handed, but I have a lot of respect for Phil Collins. He was one of the greatest drummers that ever existed. And a lot of people forget that. Um, I also have a lot of influence from Neil Peart. Uh, of course, you know, the greatest, one of the greatest drummers ever to be around. Um, but I'd say if there was any given song that really influenced me, it was probably something from R.E.M. or Radiohead back in the late 90s. Um, my first band was really into R.E.M. and Radiohead. So that's really what influenced me the most. It wasn't so much the drumming, but it was the energy of the songs and, and the way they worked together that really drew me in. All right, man. All right. Yeah. 
So let me ask you this. Have you collabed with any other drummers, man? Like, have you guys, have you been to any competitions, <laughs> any of that sort? Well, uh, not especially. Um, I'm not really a competitive kind of drummer. I'm kind of like to myself. I'm more into, you know, producing stuff like demos for other friends of mine that I've done um, remotely through recording at home um, or in the studio with Jeff. And I, I guess I would say um, some of my drum students have gotten into competitions and they do pretty well. Um, I just, for me, I'm, uh, I'm not about the competition. I'm about sharing information and, you know, absorbing from others. So I guess uh, the best I could say would be just, uh, you know, getting together with other musicians in a clinic atmosphere, like a hand drumming thing. Um, I have a friend of mine, Jim Donovan, who's uh, the ex drummer from Rusted Root. He does a lot of drumming seminars and it's really interesting to get together in a room with other people who have never played before yet can simply pick up the instrument just from hearing and listening and watching others play. So it's really easy for others to get involved with the experience as well. That's what I'm about is, is having the opportunity to play with new people is really what it's about for me. Okay. Yeah. All right, man. All right. So let me ask you this. You got a message for the youth. Yeah. Don't give up. Don't give up. And, yeah. Don't give up. And you know, Try to be original, be yourself. Don't worry about what other people think of you unless it's your band and then really take it to heart what people say to you and, and listen and learn and, and watch and respect your elders because they have a lot to show. And whether or not they have good things to teach, you can always learn what not to do in the same situation. So All keep right, your eyes man. and ears open and listen. All right, so um, I asked every artist this. Um, favorite lyrics in a song, man? <laughs> Oh man. Um, hey, it should be even part of your uh, band band lyrics too, man. It doesn't matter, yeah. you know, just something. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm a huge fan of Radiohead, so I, I guess I would say um, any lyric from Radiohead. <laughs> it's tough for me to say. I'm not <laughs> lyricist at all, you know. All right. um, uh, let's say uh, I don't know. My my girlfriend would be a great one for this. She listens to a lot of other bands that I don't listen to. They've got really good lyrics, but. Uh, Sorry, man. Um, you know, and she's buying a stairway to heaven. How about that one? Okay. <laughs> begin right, the day man. with a friendly voice. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right, man. So, uh, if you weren't doing music, what would you be doing? Um, probably, I wanted to get into culinary arts. Um, I like food. Uh, you know, um, I like uh, I like graphic design. I like visual arts. Um. That you know, I, I think uh, probably cooking. cooking, something creative, something creative. All right, yeah. All right, man, sounds good. All Thanks. right. So, what are your goals in twenty twenty one, man? What did we expect from the Town Pants, <laughs> man? Well, I my ultimate goal is to get the Town Pants back on the road. It's not up to me, but it's it's as a collective, we all really want to get back out there and tour again. You know, seeing our friends and family across the country is is really what it's about. Um, but in a realistic term for me right now, I'd like to get my solo record. It's drums only. I want to get that produced and released. Um, it's a work in progress and it's not something I'm rushing. I'm letting it come as it comes. I want it to be organic. So I just want to get some, some new demos recorded for my friends. I want to become more of a session drummer. I want to get more work in other bands doing recordings and of course, release my own projects. So that's what I got on the, on the books right now until touring comes back you know all right man all right so man um so what is the best advice anyone's given you um <laughs> i can give you the worst advice anyone ever gave me which is shut up <laughs> and play <laughs> uh the best advice i ever got was you know don't give up um my good friend who's no longer with us steve mitchell from central pennsylvania he's a jazz drummer he he just always told me don't ever give up and don't listen to the guys that try to put you down and, and listen and surround yourself with good people. Um, it's not the job you do. It's the people that you work with that makes it pleasurable and makes it worthwhile. So okay. I, I would say that would be my best advice I ever got was to be watch who you work with. All right. All right. So let me ask you this. Would that same advice, would you do that to any upcoming drummer in Syracuse, New York? Absolutely. I give that to any young drummer or any young musician anywhere. Um, you can be in a band that's really awesome and people are coming out to see the band all the time and they have a big draw. But 
if you're in a band with a guy who's a jerk, you don't want to do that because it's going to make you really uncomfortable and it's going to make you insecure as a musician. And insecurity to a drummer is like kryptonite to Superman. You got to be really confident when he plays. So I would say, you know, be with good people, work with good people. That's all I could say. All right, all right. Yeah. All right, man. Glad you had that good energy. All right, man. That's right. So, um, how is your music going to evolve from here? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, like I said, I, I plan to, since the pandemic's going on, become more of a session uh, drummer. Uh, I hope to get really involved with as much different music as possible. Um, I'm really honestly not a jazz drummer, but I'd love to get into, you know, maybe some indie rock stuff, some alternative country, Americana type stuff, folk. Um, I'm really into a lot of alternative rock as well, you know. So I hope to like really just expand on my repertoire as a recording artist and get out to as many different kinds of bands as possible. So if there's any musicians or music producers out there watching this, you need a drummer, look me up. All right, man. All right, man. So uh, no albums dropping lately for the town pants. You said you got a solo gig coming up, man. Um, we definitely going to expect you to go out of your genre, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. The more styles you know as a drummer, the better you are. Okay. All right, yeah. man. Like, all right, man. All right. So, uh, man, you got any special shout outs you want to give? Uh, I want to give a shout out to my my band, the Town Pants, David, Dwayne, and Johanna. And uh, I want to give a shout out to my kids, Ava and Maddie. And I want to give a shout out to my girlfriend, Justine, and her family, and my father, and my stepmother, and my sister, my, my brother in law. I want to give a shout out to all my family and friends here in Syracuse, New York. All right, man. All right. <laughs> All right, man. So let me ask you this, man. Is there anything that I did speak on that you want to talk about right now? Uh, what do you got going on? What's your plans? What's your future oh, plan? Man, this is this right. Yeah, you see it right now, man. I'm just gathering as much artists I can get from around the world. I don't care what genre it is. Right now, I just want to help the upcoming artists that no one's ever heard of. And that's my goal right now, man. It's to get out the people that that people, you know, you hear everything about mainstream, you know? yeah. But there's so much, there's so much hidden talent in the world that no one's ever heard of. So exactly. that's my plan. That's my plan, man. Yeah, I was checking out your website. You got a lot of different artists on there. You're doing a good job, man. I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah, man, and I appreciate yeah. you coming on this podcast, blessing us with your story. And Anytime. um, Thank and uh, let me ask you this, man. Plug in all your social media outlets. Let everyone know where they can find the town pants at. Uh, you can find the Town Pants anywhere on the internet. We're all over social media, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, as well as you can find me on Facebook, you can find me on Instagram and SoundCloud, as well as, uh, you know, I'm pretty much anywhere, uh, anywhere that you can find everybody, you know, Facebook, Instagram, that kind of thing. So, but yeah, look up the Town Pants on uh, Spotify, YouTube, all that good stuff. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The Town Pants. You already know what it is, strictly for the music podcast, and we're gone. <laughs> Thank you.